Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brick Workshop. Now, I've got my new CNC and it uses the uh, UCCNC software. And uh, I could run it from my computer with no problem at all, except if something goes wrong, you do need to be able to press a reset button quickly. So, having seen some of those excellent videos produced by uh, Barry from I2R CNC in Australia, where he has his computer screen there and it's a touch screen, I thought I must get a touch screen for myself. So I've done that and that's it just there. But it's all very well having a touch screen, you've got to have it presented to you where it's most needed. I'll show you what I've done. Now this uh, touch screen is made by Verbatim and it's powered from my computer and along the same cable uh, comes all of the data etc. So there's only need for one cable going from my computer to this and that's it, completely self-contained. Now I'm going to disconnect it now and just show you uh, what I've created here. Now the first thing I had to establish was an anchor point for all of this gubbins here and that's provided for me by having this post here uh, which is attached to the rails which are part of the CNC. And this mechanism is a very simple sort of finger joint or box joint type arrangement uh, with a, a pivot point going all the way through here, arms coming out, and then this element here, which provides, if I loosen this off, the ability for the screen to go up and down. And I can tighten that and that locks that in place. The screen itself is mounted in a little frame what I've made for it and underneath here are a pair of magnets and on this support piece there are a pair of magnets. These rear supports can fold out of the way when they're not needed and the whole thing can be folded away if it's not needed at all. Then I slide this under here and it's completely out of the way and I would then put this somewhere safe. Now let me show you how I went about the construction. Now you saw what the finished product looks like um, but I'm now back at the beginning and I've got four pieces of wood that form the frame. One I've already mounted ready to be cut in the CNC and that's the bottom piece. I've got two side pieces and a top piece and all of these pieces are made of oak and the top and the two sides are 14 millimeters thick by 34 millimeters wide uh, and the one that forms the bottom uh, that is 34 millimeters wide and 30 millimeters deep. Well I've cut that bottom channel and the idea is that the screen would sit inside it like that, there'll be side pieces and top piece there and that fits uh, nice and snugly, I'm pleased with that. I'm going to do the top piece next, here it is, and I'm going to make sure uh, that it's positioned uh, 10 millimeters from uh, this uh, edge here and 10 millimeters from there. That means then when my cutter goes to the end uh, it's not going to damage these fences. I've got some pieces which I made earlier and that gives me that 10 millimetres there and that gives me 10 millimetres there and now I can clamp this down in place and then do the cutting. So that's got the, the channel which the gadget will fit in and that does fit in, uh, so I'm happy with that, so I don't need to adjust that. All I've got to do now is the rebate at the back, and I need to move one of my hold downs to get it out of the way. Well, I've just finished uh, cutting out these simple bits. These are the long arms, there are three of them all together. Uh, and the only thing I had to remember is that uh, one hole uh, is smaller than the other hole. Uh, I, I had to go back and redo one, but 
Anyway, there it is. And the reason there's a, a larger hole is because at this end, we've got this piece of tubing through which uh, the long piece, which allows uh, this to go up and down, uh, will fit. Uh, whereas at, the, at this end, there's a short piece of that thinner tubing. Now, I'm using bamboo for this. It just happens I had some left over. It's very strong um, and probably lends itself quite well to this application. So I'm now getting ready to do the short pieces that fit uh, between the, the long bits. Uh, the top one and the bottom one uh, just have a rebate rather than a hole, but the in-between uh, pair have a hole going through. And I've got a piece of stock which is big enough to take all of them. Uh, my problem is that uh, once I've cut the holes and I then want to cut the pieces out individually, how do I hold those individual pieces in place without them moving? So, what I've done is I started with one of my uh, Vectric files. I use Aspire, but you might have VCarve Pro or whatever it might be. Um, and I've got... Uh, guidelines that go vertically and horizontally and at the intersection is where I've drilled these holes and I've got my screw inserts in here. So what I've done is I've uh, produced my drawing, my CAD drawing for this, such that the holes that have got to be in here uh, coincide, uh, their centres coincide with one of these. So if I started by drilling out the holes of all these eight pieces and it's easy then to hold the stock in place like so. Then I can use uh, a, uh, a bolt and a washer to hold these in pieces individually in place by screwing down through that hole and into here. And I can then do the cutouts and hopefully uh, the, the bolt going through will hold everything in place. Anyway, enough of that. Let's see if it works. Now, I quite like the preview you get with UCC NC when you've loaded the, uh, the toolpath. And you can see the, the sort of blue there uh, where the cutouts are going to take place. Well, uh, we'll see. <laughs> Well, I'm pretty pleased with that. All these pieces have remained in place. Um, they all look uh, pretty good to me. I'll just take them out and uh, go on to the next stage. So I've now threaded uh, this piece of pipe, which is going to take the piece that goes up and down uh, through the larger holes. And you can see it's actually taking shape. Uh, all I've got to do is sort out this end and then uh, we're almost good to go. Now I hope this now illustrates what I'm doing. Uh, this will be fixed onto the front of the CNC, onto this wooden piece here. Uh, and then this will be allowed to move around. And when it's not in use, it goes all the way underneath there. Meanwhile, through the hole here goes my piece of tube. Uh, and this will allow me uh, to then have the monitor attached to this. And this will be clamped in place. So it's pretty neat, really. So what I'm now going to do... So I'm going to join this onto that piece. And this is easily removed by undoing, or loosening rather, two screws, and this comes away. And now I can fix uh, those pieces onto here, and I have them fixed near the bottom. And finally, I'm going to run the sequence to cut out uh, the two clamps. I'm having one at the top and one at the bottom. Now, I've just cut a... Uh, a hole. In fact, it's not actually a hole. I, I told it to do a, a round internal profile. And I'm not worried about the bit in the middle because uh, the tube is going to fit down into here. And this will be the piece that goes under the display and its support. Have the tube coming up there. And I'm going to cut this now at 20 degrees, which means that when the screen is on here, it's going to be at a slight angle. And I, having uh, done that cut,
cut and I've popped it on there temporarily you can now see how it's going to look roughly something like that and uh, it will be able to be raised up and down and uh, it will be fairly secure I'm sure I'm certainly impressed with the rigidity of the uh, frame underneath yeah I'm really pleased with that now in order to finish the clamp uh, what I've done is uh, I drilled a 12mm hole all the way through one side and just a tiny bit into the other and that's because the screw insert which is going into this bit on uh, my left, your right, uh, needs that little shoulder to go in and it's 12mm across. So 12mm hole all the way through and then just a little bit into there. Then I took an 8.5mm drill because that's for the size needed so this, this thread will cut uh, and drilled the rest of the way through here. Then I was able to feed the screw insert from this side in that way, screwed it in and then I've put a piece of dowel here which has just been glued in, I'm waiting for it to dry and then I'll slice it off and then I'm going to drill a 6.5mm hole through there because that's the diameter of the thread which will be going into the insert and that will be used to tighten it up. Okay, so I'm going to have it this way up and I'll go like so It'll be fixed there on this side and then I can clamp that nicely in place. And I've just done a very uh, simple uh, little bit of profile work. Uh, these are two uh, supports that will be at the rear uh, of the uh, gadget holding the touchscreen uh, to stop it falling backwards on the stand. Now this is now virtually finished. I've got supports at the back so when uh, the touchscreen uh, framework is on here it won't go off that way. A couple of magnets, one there and one there and they match up with magnets on the frame and because one could still push it out that way to stop it uh, doing that sort of twisting motion I've put a little stop here and at this end and that then should be more than enough to secure it. And I've now anchored the, the pole here uh, with a couple of self-tappers that go through, uh, through uh, the wood and into here. Now uh, to make it just a little bit more secure I cut a couple of uh, roughly round pieces of wood and shoved them in the ends to very very tight and that gives those self-tappers a bit of extra uh, anti-wiggle if you see what I mean. <laughs> Well, I hope this video has been useful. Um, I will produce some sketches uh, for this, some sketch plans, but they're not in any great detail because it will all depend on the size of your screen, how it's constructed and how uh, it needs to fit to your CNC. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>